guy, everybody at the Trump rally. Yeah. <clears throat> I was listening to it on the radio. There's no parking at all over there. So even if you got a ticket, you can't get in. It's just a complete, total sellout. But it's the same speech you heard at the other seven rallies. You've heard one rally, you heard all of them. You know, we're doing a great job, and those people suck. I just summed up the whole rally. Save your trip to Mesa. All right, welcome to the Arizona Deliverance Center, and we're, we've we've left the hot season so nice out, and it's going to get nicer out. So the healing house over here will be full. All during the winter and we usually have some beds routinely available during the summer when it's 112 most people don't come here then now it's gorgeous like Hawaii out there today was a hot day compared to next month beautiful all right uh, we had a tremendous service last week one of the altar calls hot and we're gonna have another one today but next week is the seminar me your spirits Satan's super demons all right the radio programs on every day on 1010 10 a.m. and on the website on Omni FM you can catch the radio show whenever you want to I'm back up to over almost 3,000 listeners us down to 300 and something during my illness we came roaring back all right, if you want to uh, help out the ministry and you don't have any money and you buy stuff on Amazon, you can go there and put in our ministry name. And then when you buy a bunch of stuff, they pay us a percent of what you buy. What percent do they pay us? 1.2%. Yeah, I'm not very good at math, but that's a percent of a certain amount you spend. So if you spend $10, they would pay us what? Anybody know? Ah, what's that? Dollar twenty. All right. People from NASA here tonight. Same thing with Good Search. If you put it in our name and leave Google and go there, you'll they'll pay us if you surf the web. Okay. Same thing. I'll see Healing AZ. Our YouTube channel number two is broadcasting the teaching tonight. Our miracle lists are still available. For doing self deliverance at home, it's on the website, or you can send me an email. Uh, YouTubers, you know what your job is open up a terror cell in your church all over the country, start healing and delivering the people in your church. The donation boxes are on the doors. Thank you for helping us. Our donations went up while I was sick. Hard to believe. More people donated while I was sick than donated while I was here, which was sending me a bad message. You can also donate on the website, and we will see you in Tucson next month on Granada. That's downtown, and we'll see you in Flagstaff the week after that, okay? And we will also see you in Los Angeles. I should have that. I'll worked out by seminar next week. I'll get that done. We're going to go to Skid Row again, uh, probably in the first week of December on a Saturday, tentatively. All right. <clears throat> All right. I want to share something with you tonight. Holy Ghost psychiatry. It's different from secular psychiatry. I was trained in secular psychology, and uh, when I got into the ministry. I had to relearn uh, human psychology because what I had learned in the secular field, a lot of the information was good, but unfortunately it was incomplete and much of it was wrong. So I had to be retrained and uh, this is part of the retraining God gave me. He showed me about the human soul and this is the area the devil wants the most he wants to be able to control your emotions if he can control your emotions he can turn you into 
a carnal Christian, you will live a failed Christian life. You will end up a spiritual loser. We walk by faith, not by sight. We walk by faith, not by feelings. Emotions are betrayers. You can't trust them. Your emotions will let you down. And if the devil can learn to manipulate them like a puppet, he can control your Christian life and you will end up a spiritual failure. Let's see how he does it. Tonight we're focusing on here the soul of man. Suke is the Greek word. And here's why it's so important. Psalms 13. King David said, How long will you forget me, Lord? How forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long will I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart daily? Your soul is where your emotions come out of. Your spirit man contains the presence of the Holy Ghost. That's where your fruit and your anointing comes out of and your giftings. Your soul has your emotions. And you are required, like your mind, to control your emotions. People who can't control their emotions, who are Christians, end up living a carnal Christian life and they miss their destiny. How long will my enemy be exalted over me? Well, the answer to that question is, as long as you are living out of your soul and not your spirit man, that's how long the enemy will be in control of you. Check this out, Psalms 24. Who will ascend into the hill of the Lord? Who shall visit his holy place? Those who have a clean hands and pure heart, who have not lifted up their soul to vanity. Those who have not sworn deceitfully. The devil deliberately sends you some stuff that hacks you off. And the reason he's doing that is so you will get angry. Anger comes out of the soul. When you get angry, you want to pretend you're God and be like God and fight back instantly. So you get mad and you give that thing a good cussing. You rotten son of a... <laughs> you... That's the devil working your soul, telling you, hey, you can dominate that situation. Give that person, give that thing a good cussing and cursing, and you're in charge. You're Charles in charge. Actually, you're sinking deeper into his control over you because your soul started losing its temper and cursing and swearing. Curses are like boomerangs. Well, F you. When you curse somebody else, it boomerangs back on you. That's why the devil uses it. Why does he do that? He's smarter than we are. Oh Lord, keep my soul, Psalms 25. Deliver me. Let me not be ashamed. Wow. Shame comes from the soul. It's one of the greatest weapons the devil uses against Christians. If you can carry around shame and guilt, your future isn't worth a plug nickel. Dated myself on that one, didn't I? Yeah, you never even heard of a plug nickel. But trust me, they're no good. If the devil can control your emotions, he's got you. In the same way, if he can control your mind, he's got you. Yep, the Holy Ghost wants control of those, but he's not a control freak. A control freak imposes his control on you. That's the devil. He wants to beat you into submission and make you do what he tells you to do. The Holy Ghost won't do that. He wants to control you, but he'll only control you if you submit it of your own free will.
your soul carrying around shame Steals all your blessings because the person feels unworthy of God's mercy Shame is a horrible Christian disease You know why it's the opposite of justification When you become a Christian You're not only forgiven of your sin. You're also declared not guilty You've been justified in the eyes of God as if you'd never done anything wrong Wow, it sounds like I'm on crack. No, that's right in the Bible. It's Ephesians 1. I have been justified by God. Looking at me, you would say, oh, this guy's got to be guilty of all kinds of things. In God's eyes, justified. I've been declared not guilty. That's unbelievable. That takes the power of the blood to another level. Not just forgiving the sin. But removing the sin and then declaring you not guilty. That is a miracle. Shame will steal all that from you. It comes out of the soul. Psalm 31 Have mercy upon me, Lord. I'm in trouble. My eye is consumed with grief. My soul and my belly. Wow. Now King David leads us into the world. Of the autoimmune diseases. I just had one myself. I grew up in a dysfunctional, drunken family. I fought and fussed and fumed and had strife all my life. All my life. I didn't turn my life over to the Lord till I was 40. Unbeknownst to me, I had already destroyed my gallbladder and didn't know it. The doctor went in there, took a look at it, and said, Holy shoot That's a medical term for this dude's in trouble My gallbladder couldn't be removed. It was falling apart It was crumbling Infections running everywhere. Oh, I almost died. You know the story But what you don't know was I had done that to myself. I Dishonored my parents. I hated my parents. They were drunks. My dad was an idiot. My mom. I had no respect for I hated myself. I had rotten marriages. I had all this strife, all this fighting, all this stress. Killed myself. My belly. What's he saying there? Hey, you can rot out your internal organs emotionally. Your soul and negative emotions can rot like me. Rot out your organs, and you don't even know it. I had no idea it was going on. Never had a clue. Sighing comes out of the soul. What is that from? Grief, emotional exhaustion. Ah, jeez. Unbelievably bad. And your emotions are powerful. And if you don't control them, they can kill you. My strength fails because of my iniquity and my bones. Wow, your joints and bones, fibromyalgia, rheumatoid, irritable bowel syndrome, ulcers, all caused by negative emotions in the soul. If the devil gets you to live out of your feelings, he will destroy your Christian life and give you a terminal. Illness, and you will die. I almost died. My gallbladder was falling apart. Not good. Other organs can fall apart through negative emotion fighting, fussing, fuming, griping, complaining, arguing. All of that is absorbed into the soul and later manifests in an autoimmune. Disease Who knows that unfortunately the devil knows it and that's why he plays that card He's smarter than we are. Let's look at some examples here real quickly We'll go back in the Old Testament check out the lot family. Oh, these guys were winners Genesis 19 when the morning arose 
these angels come to town and they look just like mortals humans and They come there and Not long before that Jehovah himself had come down to talk to Abraham now the, Jehovah didn't talk to too many people Moses Abraham. That was about it The rest of the people got talked to in dreams and visions and so on but these two guys They had an incredible status in the kingdom of God God would just come down and sit there and chit chat with them Amazing Well, he chit chatted with Abraham. He said listen I'm gonna cook this place if I find out the sin is as bad as it it's been told to me uh, a couple weeks ago, I had a Bible study on omniscience a little bit, and I explained that God knows everything omnisciently, but he doesn't know everything experientially. He's just like we are. You can know something here, but you can only really know it if you experience it. So Jehovah said, I haven't experienced this, but I'm going to go down and check it out. Sodom and Gomorrah killings murders rapes incest homosexual trans all this stuff going on He says well, wait a minute Abraham goes whoa Whoa Lots down there And he's rich Lot was rich so he bootlegged off of Abraham's blessing Yeah, that's why Christians like to hang around people who are blessed they want something to bootleg over Well lot he was rich when he went into Sodom and He chose Sodom because it had the better land the more developed city and He could make more money there and Abraham let him choose first Because he already knew he was covered under the blessing So you don't have to fight for anything when you're covered under the blessing, you know, you're already covered so he goes in there. He's whoa, Yahweh. Let me talk to you for a minute. Have a seat here, <laughs> Sarah, honey. Get that, get them lamb chops I've been wanting out, and get the best vittles we got. Yes, sir. That's that's a term, vittles. It's not a term here, but it, in some states, that's a real term, vittles. <laughs> It's not a biblical term say or make and He says you're not going to go down there if you find a bunch of righteous people there and blow that place up He says well, I hadn't thought of it. Well, wait a minute What if you find? 150 200 he says because it's you Abraham, I won't do it. He said well Wait a minute. I'm a roll here I'm getting my prayers answered left and right. Why not keep going? So Abraham drops to a number he knows is going to save Sodom and Gomorrah. There's got to be more than 10 righteous people there. There's got to be. So he stops. Oops. That's a oops in the Old Testament. There's a lot of them. Well, the angels go down there and say, hey, Lot, listen, dude. We did an audit of the town and we're down to about five. We're going to have to blow the place up. Whoa, wait a minute. I'm a multimillionaire here. I got all my wealth here. I'm loaded. They said in about a half a day, you're going to be unloaded. You got to get this thing out of here. Fast And here's the story they go in there in the morning arose. They said hey Wake up get your wife your two daughters Before you are consumed because of the iniquity of the city and lot lingered. Oh The devil was trying to get him to stay there using the emotions of his soul Your soul gets an attachment to material things in this life and it becomes sin to you. You get emotionally attached 
Oh, I love cars. I got a car collection. I got this collection. I got coins. I got that. Whatever you put your heart on, that's where your treasure is. And the devil goes, hey, Lot, buddy, listen, you can't leave here. What about the cattle? What about the land? What about all the wealth? What about the property? What about the building? What about everything? The cash? Dude. So he's stalled. And he starts to think, oh my God, I got this soul tied to these material things, which ends up killing you. And you miss your destiny and your call from God because you got a soul tie to this world. You've conformed to this world. You got a little pull there. And Lot was getting pulled. He wanted to leave because he didn't want to be blown up. But he started, whoa, wait a minute. And this thing started pulling him back. He wanted to get out. But... Wow. It's very similar to battered wife syndrome. Honey, leave the dude. This is the fifth time you got beat up. Don't go back there. He said he changed. He's not going to change, honey. But he went into rehab. No. Honey, don't go. Something. A soul type pulled her back to another beating. Lot was being pulled by his soul so he would die along with his family. And it says the angels grabbed the dude. That's how powerful Abraham's prayers were. Oh, you don't get it, do you? Somebody's got a praying grandma here, and your grandkids should be dead right now. They're not. Grandma's got her hands on the horns of the altar. Abraham had already prayed. Lot hadn't prayed. He was worthless as <laughs> Abraham's prayers caused them angels to grab him. Dude, we're going to haul you out. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man, a big. Baileth much. Get your wife. We're going. They took the two daughters. Jehovah being merciful to him. Why? Abraham was praying. They took him outside the city. Hey, come here. Stand here. Go. Go to the mountains because everything you see that's level is going to get leveled. They brought him out and they said, escape for your life. Don't look behind you. Don't stay in the plane because everything you see in all these cities around Sodom and Gomorrah, everything gone. Why? Las Vegas is a servant of Satan. But the evil sin of Las Vegas has infected all the cities around it. Evil always spreads. Wickedness always seeps out. It's not just New Orleans. There's a witchcraft spreading all over the town, all around New Orleans. San Francisco. It's spreading all over like a plague. All these cities around Sodom and Gomorrah, Escape to the mountains lest you be consumed. And he said, oh, no, no, my Lord, listen, you've been good to me. And you've shown mercy and saving my life. He says, I can't escape to the mountain. Lest some evil take me and I die. Yeah. Here he turns into an American Christian. God tells him to do something. But because he's never been there before, fear grabs him. In spite of what God said, fear always cancels out God's word. You didn't hear me. I think God's word always prospers everywhere it goes. No, it doesn't. When you have fear, it wipes out the word of God in your heart. It happens all the time. If you don't believe it, look around. Look at your family. Look at your church. 
He said, I can't go to the mountains. Oh my God, I've never been there. That's scary over there. Okay. They said, listen. The angel goes, okay, this guy's either going to get consumed or I can let him go to another town. Got to go to the other town. So the angel takes his backup plan. Okay, go flee and my soul shall live. Go flee to Bela, which is now renamed Zoar. And here is the actual city. There's the remains of it. There's people, few people living there still. And here's where it's located here. It's the north part of Israel. Here's Lebanon right up there. See it there? So Sodom and Gomorrah had to have been somewhere around here, right in this area. And he said, see, I've accepted you concerning this thing, and I will not overthrow this city which you have spoken. So he allows him to go to Zoar. So all the cities around Sodom and Gomorrah are cooked except one. Why? Because Lot was a good guy. No, Lot was an idiot. Abraham prayed through. Grandma's praying for the son on meth who's a moron. The Holy Ghost is following the idiot son around because grandma's over here at the altar. Oh, yeah. Some of you should already be dead and are not because somebody was praying for you when you didn't know it. <clears throat> oh, yeah. He says, uh, hasten and escape because I cannot do anything until you are there. Because you're a great guy and a glorious man of God. <laughs> Abraham prayers covered this family. And so we can't do anything. You don't understand. When you're covered with somebody's anointed prayers, the devil can't take you out. Good to have somebody that knows how to pray, praying for you. People that don't know how to pray, you don't need them praying for you. Those prayers are useless. <laughs> Zoar, which means what? Little, teeny, small, tiny. And it was what? Morning when Lot entered Zoar. And that was the end of it. As soon as he got into town, click, Abraham's prayers ended. <laughs> Nuclear bomb. My guess is it was probably lightning, but I don't know. It doesn't say. But anyway, whatever it was that destroyed all them cities, it was nasty. It was nasty. Mild compared to the Revelation. Revelation. The book of Revelation. It was mild. Anyway, I'm not going to be here for that. He overthrew those cities all in the plain, not in the mountains. All the inhabitants died and the crops <sighs> disappeared. Total desolation everywhere. Why? Listen, as you can see in our society, lust demons, superpowered lust demons, they spread like wildfire. And it takes the devil a while to get it done, but homosexuality, for example, started in the 60s kind of booming, but it took decades to get it normal now. But now that homosexuality is normal now, trans booting off of that is now spreading 10 times faster than homosexuality. Pretty soon, trans will now be nor normal. It's going to be totally normal in a few years, just like homosexuality. What's the point I'm trying to make? Those spirits that cause those sins spread like wildfire because they spread through interpersonal contact. Once you sleep with someone that has a lust demon, it jumps into you. Once you're molested by somebody who's gay, that spirit pops into the kid. It spreads through personal contact. In Sodom and Gomorrah, it had spread everywhere. 
these guys were so perverted they wanted to rape two angels They must have been some good-looking angels. Yeah. That's angel food. <laughs> yes, sir. Lot and his family lived in a cauldron of perversion, Las Vegas, New Orleans, San Francisco, where the perversion becomes normal. To them, it was normal. They didn't think anything of it. Lots so jacked up morally, spiritually, he tells the perverts coming to rape the angels. Hey, listen, I got two virgin daughters here. Take them instead. What? What are you nuts? Even that act of total insanity did not wipe out Abraham's covering prayer. That's Holy Ghost power. Oh no. Your soul, living out of your soul, is eventually going to kill you. It's going to kill your spiritual life. And that's why the devil works on your soul so vociferously, so viciously. That's why he's always sending you a certified idiot. At work, at home, at holidays, strangers, whatever it is, a moron always comes up to you and says something you can't believe is that stupid. <laughs> I mean, it's massively asinine. They were sent on a mission from Satan to do what? Cause your soul to take in a wound and an offense. Once that happens, the devil now has control over you because he sent you an imbecile and you received him into your soul. Now you are a co-imbecile. Once you've developed a soul tied to sin, it will cost you your life. She, her soul pulled her back. They were wealthy there. Mrs. Lot lived a beautiful life. They lived in the upper crust of their society. They were respected people. They were loaded with money. Now she's running to Zoar. Zoar was a rat hole filled with a bunch of psycho sinners. She didn't want to go to Zoar. She didn't want to go to the mountains. She wanted to go there even less. So her soul pulled her around. She had this feeling for, oh my God, I'm leaving my good life. Gone. Wow, friend, a good life will destroy you. So watch out for it. For where your heart is, there your treasure will be as well. She was behind Lot when it happened. If she'd been in front of him, he could have grabbed her and said, no, no, don't look back. No, she was behind him. Typical husband. <laughs> oh, yeah. Either my God, there's this thing's going down. I got to get out of here. Run, honey. <laughs> That's a husband for you. Christian husband, by the way. They all, they're all the same. Well, listen, they... They went out of Zoar and moved to the mountains. Finally, they did what they were told to do originally. Could have saved a lot of time and effort had they obeyed. The angels knew Zoar sucked and should have been burned up. But Goofy wanted to go there. So they let him go because Abraham was praying for him. This ain't about Lot. This ain't a Lot story. He leaves Zoar. It's so bad. So much sin, so many sick people there. A cave had it beat. You got to be living in a pretty bad town to go for a cave. Yes, sir. 
when we first moved into Afghanistan after 9-11 They all ran and lived in caves Why? It's better than getting blown up You gotta be in deep trouble in life when a cave is doing you well you in trouble Just for your own information The firstborn says to the younger now remember you can take people out of perversion but you can't take the perversion out of the people. That didn't even land. When you send somebody to rehab, you think they're cured? They're not cured. They can relapse. Lot leaves Zoar, a rat hole. Moves into a cave. Unfortunately, he brought his two perverted daughters with him. The ones he offered to the perverts so they wouldn't rape the angels. Here, rape my kids. What in the world are you what were you thinking about? So then they go to a cave. I tell you, you gotta be pretty bored in a cave to do this. <clears throat> Our father's old and there's not a man in all the earth. Well, I don't blame them. I mean They'd been to Zoar and they're thinking in their minds. This is the only city left on the planet earth as far as we know the whole planet burned down Back then incest was Permissible at the law of Moses later incest was No more incest like you couldn't even look at you Somebody in your family naked couldn't even look at them. That's how strict the laws were back then Because of population issues my guess is Incest was permissible So these two pervert kids are thinking There's nobody left on the planet earth, but This idiot <laughs> And we are going to be barren for the rest of our lives as far as they know, the whole planet got cooked. And we're not going back to Zor. Those guys are perverts. We have our own brand of perversion. We don't want somebody else's. People that are perverts only like their own brand of perversion. They don't want to bootleg into somebody else's perversion. Oh, yeah. People that are serial adulterers who are heterosexual don't want to go into incest. They don't like that. Even though they're perverts. Perverts are particular about their perversion. It's not even on. My father is old. What's your saying there? He's not going to get remarried. He's too old. First of all, there's nobody to marry. Okay, you can't have kids with a pillar of salt over there. Pillars of salt are not hot. No. And there's no other man, so let's what we'll do is we'll have this insanity, which seemed fine to him. The other daughter goes, seems reasonable. <laughs> but when you are grown up in perversion and you're grown up in a false religion, you're grown up in a, an environment, what happens there seems normal to you. Yeah. Other people look in and go, Are you kidding me? That's crazy. <laughs> You you belong to that cult and they're doing what? Oh, it's fine. It's as if you're going what the people in the cult think it's normal They don't have a problem with it And we can preserve our seed we can have kids we're not gonna be barren for the rest of our life and alone So the firstborn bared them a son and they called his name Moab which means from my father he became the father of the Moabites. The younger bear a son called his name an enemy, and that means son of my people. He became the father of the Ammonites. Have you ever heard of them? Yeah. They made Sodom and Gomorrah look like a Christian day program. <laughs> Here's what Jehovah said. Deuteronomy 23. This is during the law of Moses. Yahweh said, an Amorite or Moabite 
will never Enter the congregation of the Lord all of them Were banned by God They were offspring of demonic perversion Happens all the time in our society. Oh, yeah I've done marriage counseling. I don't know how many times <clears throat> You've been married for how long? Oh, we've been married for two years. How are things going? Hell has come to breakfast. Hmm. What a surprise. <laughs> Did you know that your husband had an affinity for goats? No, I didn't. He was very, he was great during when we were dating. Oh, they were, he was great, was he? Did you ask any questions about his parents or his grandparents? Ask any do any investigation about this person you married for the rest of you? well, no, I didn't they seem nice Okay seeming nice and Being in love with a person is no reason to marry the losers Hello Because they may have a background you're not aware of particularly a spiritual background There may have been horrible Evil in that family tree grandma grandpa great grandpa You don't know what's in that family tree and if you don't know what's in that family tree, You don't know what kind of spirits are coming down through the tree who will be looking at your children when they're born They will be targeted for termination Because you didn't do your as the lawyers say due diligence You got married because you were in love. Oh, it's so sweet. So nice Get married because you're in love Dude, you'd have been better off staying on crack. Yeah. Do not get married because you're in love. Do an investigation. Okay, that didn't go over well. Let's go back to this. <laughs> Let's switch over to another family. Moses' family. You can see how Lot got in nothing but trouble, can't you? It was all the devil manipulating their emotions. See, she died because of emotions. Fear got into the daughters and generated incest. It was all their soul, it was all emotional. They didn't control their emotions, and it led to disasters. And it will do the same for you if you do not learn. To control your emotions. Let's check out Moses here. Uh, Moses has led him out of Egypt, Numbers 12. Moses is psh, like Abraham, right at the top, and one of God's super favorites. I mean, Moses was, geez, huge, super big. Well, Miriam, his sister, who was a good woman of God when they came across the, the river and the Jews got in the, and the uh, Egyptians drowned remember that she she was a leader of the worship team Have you ever been around worship people in the choir and different places R run uh, Run I've been around lots of them in counseling saying oh It ain't good over there. Okay Stay the heck away from them but anyway, Miriam's a worship leader. She was leading the whole nation in praise. Praise. Good woman of God. Aaron, the high priest of Israel, the top guy. She's the top assistant. He's the top priest. Then you got nobody above him but Moses, one guy. Oh, that's a bad spot to be in when you've got your soul manifesting. Okay. Moses in their eyes had made a terrible mistake. He married some crazy woman from Ethiopia. Yeah. Anybody here married to an Ethiopian? <laughs> Nobody? Good. Now I can continue. Now listen. They didn't like it. See? Why? Well, she wasn't in their clique. Meaning Jewish clique. 
and uh, they were upset with him and it had been boiling for a long period of time see once you let the devil put a little hook in your soul ooh, something got in your craw there they call it craw in some areas of the country the Bible calls it soul once that little thing gets in there it starts to fester and then the person starts over time developing bitterness frustration anger it starts out little well, you're married in Ethiopia. Well, I guess that's okay. No big. Ooh, it starts to grow the more you feed it negativity. Well, her soul and Aaron's soul had about had enough of this. They were all emotionally involved. Now they're upset, which comes out of the soul, correct? And they said, hey, Jehovah just doesn't speak to him, he, he speaks to us too. Okay, arrogance and vanity and pride come out of the soul. You start to feel important. See, you start to feel like you ought to be telling other people what to do. That's a dangerous spot to be in. Ooh, that's a spin. Click. Hopefully, it clicks. Well, in Miriam and Aaron, it didn't click. It phew, fired. Once you start thinking more of yourself than you ought to think, you'll start criticizing other people. And you'll start sharing your dramatic spiritual knowledge with them. Ooh. Boy, I've been around this a long time. I know what I'm doing. You don't. Can you imagine? Moses led them out of Egypt, led them across the rivers, Red Sea. Can you imagine? They get over to the other side and people start criticizing. Hey, Moses, you screw up. Let me tell you something. When you've got demonic soul issues, you can live a perfect life and people will criticize you. Like Jesus. No matter what you do for them, no matter how much you give them, no matter how good you are, no matter how many right things you do, somebody will always. <coughs> Come along and criticize you. Yeah. I know that's true. So I don't give a hoot. I, I just caved into it. I said, here, I'll give you a lot of stuff to criticize. Here it is. There's a truckload of it. All you got to do is watch the video. Holy crap, this guy's crazy. I just gave in. Well, Moses hadn't given in. He, he was just obeying the Lord. It says here, he's a meek man. Above all the men on the face of the earth. It's amazing how many Christians see the power of God and then forget it later. It's utterly incredible. I mean, some people get the most amazing miracles. And the next time the adversity strikes them, they become brain dead. They can't remember a thing. It happens all the time. I'm serious. It's a common Christian failing. Well, it wasn't Moses's. He said, wow, I saw the Red Sea split. It stayed with him. I saw the miracles of Egypt. It stayed with him. It didn't stay with Miriam. It didn't stay with Aaron, the idiot. See, before he became the high priest, Aaron was the family knucklehead. You ever had one of those in your family? They're always talking a big game. They talk all the time. They're always running them out. They know this and that and this. One subject comes up, NASA Martians. Oh, they're an expert on it. <laughs> Another subject comes up, farming. Oh, they're an expert on that. You ever met those people? It's embarrassing. And they start rambling crap. Are they, it's all garbage. But they actually think you're believing it. Well, Moses never fell for any of that. He saw the miracles. He saw that he could do nothing. He kept it. Unlike most Christians. He kept it.
there's nobody that amazes other people more than people like Moses who are great people who are regular people other people love people like that they like the Trump types but for different reasons They like the Warren Buffett types. That's what people really like. That's what they really respect. A person who has great things, but acts like a regular person. Approachable. Just a, like a friend. Moses kept it. But that fancy outfit Aaron was wearing got to him. Yeah, he had one of those Orthodox church outfits on. Giant robe, comb head, two feet. See, you put on these robes and these cone heads, the devil starts to tell you, man, baby, you look good. You look great. You're powerful looking. Oh, you got it. You're wearing an outfit. That means you're something special. The devil will come to you and build that up so that you think you're a special person. As soon as you reach that level, you're going to be cut down real soon. Now Moses. No, he wasn't going to go there. The Lord spoke suddenly to Moses and Aaron and Miriam. They must have been together. They probably came to him to, to uh, explain to him, hey, we got to get this Ethiopian chick out of here. He said, whoa. Come outside the tabernacle. Why do you want him out of the tabernacle? Jehovah's not going to go over that kind of insanity in his tabernacle. You got to go outside with that crap. They went outside. What happened then? What's going on here? This is all an exercise in the human soul. Your emotions will lead you down a dark path you may never get out of. Your emotions are your enemy if you don't keep track of them. They're a tremendous asset if you watch over them. You let your emotions go and you will rue the day you did it. Well, Miriam and Aaron let their emotions go. They're about to rule the day here. And it says here, Yahweh came down in a pillar of the cloud and stood in the midst of the door of the tabernacle. So they come out of the tabernacle. They're over there. Jehovah comes down in the tabernacle. And he stands at the door. So they can't go back in. If you let your emotions dominate you. The blessings from God come right here. And then they stop. And you lose them. As soon as you start start taking offenses, as soon as you start getting upset, as soon as you become <gasps> appalled, your downfall is only a few blocks away. <gasps> Dare you talk to it? Come here. He said, "Hear my words. If there's a prophet among you, Jehovah said." I will make myself known to them with a vision or something dream here and there but he says my servant Moses like Abraham who is faithful in all my house I come down and talk to him like a friend I don't have a pillar of cloud I don't have a vision I don't have I just come and talk to my friend I ain't talking to you two why they couldn't control their soul. How many times have you been married, Bill? I've been married ten times. What's going on there? The soul. The devil's dragging the person's soul all through one relationship. Bad, bad, bad. Sucks, sucks, sucks. It's all related to your soul. One broken relationship after the other, not controlling the emotions. Once your emotions begin to dominate you, you become a failure 
as a Christian. He will always be a failure. Hey, I just talked to Moses face to face. Look at that. Not in dark speeches. What are you doing? And so you're not. You didn't see that? And so you just run your mouth? Is that what you're doing? God asked them. You just run in your mouth? Your soul and your emotions will cause you to run your mouth. Happens all the time. Blah, 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 blah. Running your mouth will get you in more trouble than you can ever dream of. And the anger of the Lord, Jehovah, was kindled against them, and he left. And a cloud departed off the tabernacle, meaning the presence of God had departed. And Miriam turned into a leper, white as snow. What does that mean? That's the final stages of it. Aaron took a look at her and panicked. And he says to Mo Moses, Alas, my Lord, I beg you, do not lay this sin upon us. Aaron repented right on the spot. Notice that. He knew it was sin. He knew it was stupid. We have done foolishly. We have sinned. Wow. What a great way to overcome deficits in the soul. Wow, what a beautiful prayer for people who are run by their emotions to make tremendous prayer. Let her not be as one who's dead and half consumed that comes out of the mother's womb. What's that mean? Babies, you know, premature death, disabled children would come out of the womb, all kinds of weird disabilities. Moses cried out to the Lord. <laughs> Notice that Moses' soul was now working in a godly direction. You have the option of using your emotions for sin or for a miracle from God. Moses looked over at his sister, whom he loved, White as a leper, knowing she was terminally ill, and his emotions manifested for her safety. If you're sitting in your living room and some psycho comes in looking for your kids, your emotions are going to react positively. You're going to leap off the couch and grab something that's handy and bash that person's head in. You'll get my kids through my dead body. That's the human soul acting productively. Negative emotions, soulish emotions, will steal your miracles every time. Taking offense, getting upset, being hurt. <coughs> You know what the devil calls those things? Shooting your soul? Fiery darts. <clears throat> and that's exactly what they are. They shoot into the soul, they're on fire, and they start to burn and spread. Just like the devil said. I'm begging you to heal her. What happened? Yeah, he healed her. You see that illustration there? That family was running around with all kinds of emotions. Some of them were good. Most of them were bad. It caused all kinds of problems. You, as a born-again Christian, have the Holy Ghost, and you can control your emotions. You don't have to die sick. You don't have to be like Brother Mike and have that gallbladder fall out of you. After years of fighting and fussing and fuming, you don't have to do that. You can choose to do what's right. Oh, this is a good family here. Job's family. This is a great story. Job chapter 1. The Lord said to Satan, Where are you coming from? He said, I'm doing what I normally do. 
I'm going to and fro over the face of the whole earth walking up and down. That's exactly what he does now. He has never stopped that behavior. He is roaming all over the planet to see what government, what state, what country he can destroy next. That's what he normally does. I'm acting normal. What do you expect? Jehovah said, have you considered my servant Job? This is the King James Bible. Sumaleb in Hebrew means, uh, I notice you've got your heart set on Job. See, Jehovah had spotted Satan roaming around the earth, and he stopped at Job's house. Trust me, friend, the devil's going to send somebody over to your house if he hadn't already done it. It will happen. I guarantee it. The devil walks over to Job's house. He's looking around. He goes, he's fuming mad. Here's this Job guy worshiping the Lord. Fantastic man of God, doing everything right. And what really makes him mad is jealousy comes up in his heart. All the blessings God gave Job, Satan used to have in abundance. Father used to give Satan all those blessings when he was a Lucifer hundreds and thousands of years ago, whenever that happened. He ate a Job. So he comes in with a plot. He says, I'm going to destroy this guy. So Jehovah goes, here's what I'm going to do. I know what he's thinking, and I'm going to circumvent him. I'm going to beat him again. But I'm going to use an unconventional method here that will last way beyond Job. I'm going to give the Deliverance Center the book of Job 2,000, 3,000 years <laughs> later. And this whole thing was orchestrated to give us that incredible book. That is probably the most amazing book in the Old Testament. The insights in that thing are unbelievable. The scientific information in that book is shocking. But this story is the best one of all. I, it's my favorite. He says, uh, well, i got to provoke the devil and get him, to, get him madder. See, he's throwing logs on the fire. He says, have, have you seen Job? <laughs> oh, you have, huh? Did you notice he, he is a wonderful man of God? He, he loves me. You notice that? You used to love me. See, that's, that's the implication there. They have a relationship that's thousands and thousands of years old or whatever it is. So they know each other. He, he doesn't do anything you tell him to do. He doesn't live in evil. He, he obeys. He's a worshiper. Like you used to be. You know, he didn't say it, but the implications there. What's he doing? He's, he's twisting that knife. He didn't stick it in. He twists it after he sticks it. Now the devil's like, oh, he'd kill Jehovah, but he knows he can't. He wants Job so bad. Now his, he can taste it. Now he's been pushed over his edge. Well, then he says to the Lord, listen, Job only follows you because you give him stuff. See, he's like your kids. Yeah. Your kids only like you because they know you. They, know, know, they don't like you for nothing. They like you because you give them stuff. Because okay? they already know you. And nobody really likes you. And so the devil goes, hey, you put a hedge around him. Look what you're doing. Who wouldn't like you? Translation, you pulled the hedge down around me when I when I stabbed you in the back and betrayed you. See in the implications here? The conversation is fascinating. Hey, you've got him covered on every side. You're taking care of him no matter what. Look at that. You bless everything he does. As soon as he does a project, you bless it. And then it booms. Of course he likes you. It's all a fraud. If you touch all that stuff you're giving him, if you take that away, it curses you to your face. Don't do that with your kids because you're not going to like the result. Just keep giving them stuff. The Lord said, Behold, 
Everything he has is yours. Wow. <clears throat> this never happened before and it never happened since. It was a special circumstance so we could get this incredible book. It's a miracle book. He says, everything you've got, but don't touch him. Listen, some of you are living in sin. Some of you are not listening to God. Some of you are not obeying. And mercy's covering that right now. Mercy covers it right now. The day is coming. Click when it stops. And you will reap what you've sown. It runs out. So what happens? You know what happens? This is unbelievable. What's the story telling us? The incredible power of Satan. If you open the door to the devil and you deliberately and willfully keep sinning, you're asking for it because somebody on the other side is watching that and hell is coming to your house sooner or later you're gonna pay for it from God no check this out the Sabaeans came and took took them all away they slain all the they murdered everybody they chopped them up with swords I am the only one that has escaped to tell you what's that telling you listen the devil when you give him an opening He'll come in, he'll steal everything you got, but he'll always leave something behind. Kind of a reminder. He won't take everything until he kills you. Then he takes everything. But before that, he left Job somebody to bring him bad news. And God, will, the devil will always leave naysayers in your life to bring you a negative word. They'll hunt you down. Yeah, they'll come from that side of the church when they see you walk in. Come clear over here to get you. Hey, negativity. Yes, sir. Thanksgiving, Uncle Dick walks in. Oh, God. No, you look down. You dive into the punch bowl. He catches you. Comes over. Starts saying negative things to you. Why? He's a messenger of Satan. Sent to you to bring you bad news. The Sabaeans... Killed everybody there, but the devil said don't kill that guy. I need him to take a message back to Job And oops While he was speaking another guy shows up and He says the fire of God is fallen from heaven now here you go again. What a great revelation people think Disasters are caused by God. They're not. Yeah, there's kooks out there on TV and YouTube. Oh my God, America's so sinful. God's going to judge this country. They're going to get blown up. <laughs> it's not God doing that. It's the devil doing it. You're just reaping what you're sowing. God's trying to save you, not kill you. It's the message of the gospel. God never makes people sick. He's trying to make you well. The fire of God, it didn't come from God. That guy's wrong. He thought it came from God. Don't you see that? We know it came from the devil because we saw behind the scenes, which is the purpose of the book. They burned up the sheep. Oh, well, that's cold-blooded there. You know the devil's a bad person when he's burning up sheep. They're just stupid. There's no need to burn a sheep up. If you just take kill the people, they'll just run off and get eaten by wolves. They're too dumb. They can't fend for themselves. They're idiots. Very similar to some of your children. I mean, box of rocks dumb. Box of rocks. Dumb. So you know that's evil. They are killing sheep. I mean, you know the devil's mad. Because Yahweh provoked him. He stuck that knife in there and twisted it He's mad now. He's gonna kill the sheep. That's how mad he is Killing sheep is really bad 
Then he murders the servants and it consumed them. They were eviscerated. That's incredible. Again, caused by Satan, not God. Notice that? Notice the devil's controlling the weather here. That's really interesting. While he was yet speaking, another messenger of bad news. And you know exactly what Job's going through here. You've had multiple people come to you over there. You can't do that. You're not going to do that. You won't get that. You're not going to mount anything. You're a loser. You're, you're fat. You're stupid. You're ignorant. You're an idiot. <laughs> it never stops. It's like an avalanche. It's like a waterfall. Of people with demons coming to you. You're no good. That's not God telling you them things. That's people running from the Chaldean. Look at they took three bands. They took everything. They even took the camels. That's cold blooded stealing a camel because back then that's like stealing a Mercedes Benz or something. They slew the servants, killed them all, chopped them up. But I survived. Why? Satan protected me. Oh, you don't understand. The <laughs> devil can promote you and bless you and protect you if in the end he knows he's going to catch you. Happens all the time. How do you think these TV preachers survive? The devil sends them millions of dollars to teach false doctrine. If they repented, the money would dry up like that. <clears throat> oh, while he was speaking, another one came in. A messenger of bad news. Evangelist for Satan. And then he hits him with the worst one. This one hurt him more than all the others. This one really hurt bad. The children died. And that really hurt him. Because Job was a, a good man, a good man of God, and a loving father. And his kids are dead. That really gets to parents, particularly mothers. It is absolutely devastating. <clears throat> they were sitting around how enjoying themselves, drinking and so on, and boom. There came what? The devil used a tornado to destroy this family. Showing you the devil can control the weather. Most people think he can't do that. They're all dead, but I survived. Uh huh. The devil will always leave somebody in your life who can bring you some bad news. Maybe he will not get rid of that person. He will get rid of anybody and do you any good. People who move away, die, get married, move off, leave you, whatever. If they're good for you. But he'll leave the crumbs, the crappy people. You don't mention any names. You know who they are. There are plants in your life to bring you negativity and bad news. Why? They're trying to emotionally damage you. They're emotionally trying to get you to take an offense, take in a hurt, take in a wound, get upset at somebody's asinine behavior. It's usually family members. It's usually somebody in church. It happens all the time. I'm the only one left. Job arose. He rent his mantle. He shaved his head. He fell down. Unbelievable. If Job were alive today, he'd be the world's most powerful Christian. Can you imagine a Christian doing this? Not in a million years. If somebody looks at you wrong, a Christian takes an offense. Oh, you're wearing that outfit again. Oh, they don't like my outfits. Oh, my God, I can't believe it. Oh, gee, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> Christian get offended over anything. Anything. Clothes. Who you hanging around. What are you talking to him for? Oh, well, gee. I don't think anybody likes your idea of ministry. Oh, they don't like my idea. Oh, God. Oh, my God. No. Oh. <laughs> Don't gripe about anything. Christians are gutless losers. Job lost everything and fell down and worshipped. Incredible man of God. Amazing to say the least. Then he says truths and then he says lies. Let's pick them out. What are the truths? First truth, I came out of my mother's womb naked. 
That's true. That's true. Nobody comes out wearing a tux. Dude, you fall out naked. Some of you are so rotten, you slap get slapped, and then you slap the doctor back. You know <laughs> the slap here is to get you to start breathing. See? Good thing, bad things happen to people for good reasons. <laughs> I will return naked. Not to his mother's room, but he'll die and have nothing. What are you talking about? Jehovah gave. True. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oops. See? If you could only for a second with me, look on the other side. Just for a second. You would see this. As clear as Job didn't see it. He thought it was God that killed his family, took all of his belongings, left him broke again. He's a multi-millionaire. A billionaire by our terms. Broke again. And then he goes, Blessed be the name of the Lord. <laughs> Can you imagine a Christian doing that? <laughs> One little thing goes wrong, right? You're supposed to get a check Tuesday. It didn't come in. I word of faith that check. <laughs> I command the check to be in there Monday. I command my wallet to fill with money. Oh! Check doesn't come in money. Oh, Jesus. Copeland, I'm going to kill him. The check come in Tuesday or Wednesday, no problem. The Holy Ghost had the check. Worry about the check. Oh, they took an offense. They lost their faith. One little thing like that. Oh, they collapse. Golly. Not Job, man. He lost everything. Said, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, will that help us tonight? God, I hope that helps us. Amen. Oh, I hope that helps us tonight. What happens next? Uh oh. The devil lost, but listen carefully. When the devil comes for you, you got to fight back. Yes. Once you fight back, if you do, th praise God for that. He's going to take another run at you. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know why? He doesn't believe you. He thinks you're a certified wuss. And he's going to test you again. Yeah. Your husband, your wife, your kids, they're going to screw up once. And then he's going to go get them again. And they're going to come back looking for you. The devil come back looking for Job. He lost that one, but he... Now he's got an idea. I can't lose with this one. Okay? Because human beings put their bodies ahead of anything, including their family, including their money, and their assets. Their bodies are their God. I'll get Job this time. I got it. He does the same thing over. He says, hey, listen. If you touch his body, he'll curse you right to your face. He won't say, blessed is the name of the Lord again. No, no. Ah. No, I heard that. That made me sick. But he won't say it again. He says, okay, you can have his body, but you're not allowed to kill him. So the devil does what? He sits down. He starts thinking about Job, just like he does you. You see... Temptations don't come like crap table. Okay. Now, let's look at it. Uh-uh. Temptations are tailor-made for you. You're not going to get a crap shot. You're going to get, bing, a fiery dart. He's going to sit down and analyze your personality. He's going to look at you. Now, what, what is this person like? What, what don't they like? What are they afraid of? He will do an audit on you. Mm. He's going to take a hard look at your life. You're easy to audit, by the way. You know why? Because you say everything. When you're alone, you talk to yourself. When you get older, you talk more. Uh -huh. 
Yeah, I know. Get a little older, do a little more talking to yourself. Because there's a delusion in your mind, like you think that's going to help. Sometimes you try to talk yourself out of stuff. It's humans. Humans. You think more when you're young. You talk more when you're young. Oh, yeah. You talk all the time. You run your mouth like a busted chainsaw. And when you do, what you said is picked up in the spirit world. And they know exactly what pisses you off. They know exactly what you love. They know exactly what you lust after. They know exactly what you wish you had. They know exactly all about your greed and your desires. And they're all audited and kept on your list, your termination list. The devil's looking for you. He knows how to find you. He sits down and looks at Job and he says, hey, this is a tough guy here. Break his arm, break his leg. He's going to, nah, no problem there. He's going to blow that off. He's going to work through that. I know the guy. I'm going to give him something he ain't going to work through. I'm going to kick Joe's face in. And he did. And I got nothing but sympathy for Job. Have you ever had a boil? Anybody here ever had one? Nobody? Nobody's ever had a boil. You had one? Where'd you have it on your body, sir? On your arm? Would you like to have one on your scrotum? How about six or seven on your genitals? Bottom of your feet? Eyelids? No. I read this story the first time and I'm panicking because I misread it. I didn't understand what was going on. And I thought, my God, Joe. God's given this poor guy boils. He's getting them all over. You talk about agony. I, I don't have the words to describe that. Because you can't get in any comfortable position. There's no comfortable position. Laying down, spread out, no, nothing but pain. Standing up, nothing but pain. Stand on your head, screaming. There's no way to get out of it. So they took a bunch of logs and wood, burned all the stuff up, big bonfire, cooled down the ashes, and Job sat in it, like in a way kind of like a jacuzzi, right? And then they gave him pottery pieces, which I'm sure was, it was, that's healthy, and he's <laughs> scraping his boils off with a piece of pottery. And that's the richest man in the whole area. That's, that's the man of God, sitting on a pile of ashes, scraping off boils. There's pus in boils, right, sir? How'd you get rid of yours? <laughs> he had to go see a doctor. Job did too. He found these ashes, <laughs> sat down in it, and got him a pottery. They didn't have any doctors back then. I mean, this guy was in agony. Sha'in in Hebrew means burning or inflammation. These things were boils are nasty. And then guess what happened? Anybody know? Yeah, his wife comes to him. Oops. And she says to him, Do you still retain your tuma innocence? His wife thought. He was guilty. And here's the mindset back then, still a mindset today. If you do something wrong, God punishes you. If you do something right, God blesses you. That's a false doctrine. Hey, bad things happen to good people all the time. You're guilty. You must have had some secret sin. You probably got some hoe you've been seeing. Oh, yeah. You've been using that money to gamble, haven't you? Oh, yeah. As soon as you get into trouble, people you thought were your friends can't be found anymore. But the devil will send you a plant to say something negative to you. 
Oh, you must have really done something bad. You're guilty. Best thing for you to do is just die. All right. Need some marriage counseling there. <laughs> and Job says, hey, you speak like, speak like one of the Nabals, the stupid women running around here. You're talking like an idiot. What's wrong with you? He's talking about spiritually. She wasn't an idiot. She was talking like a spiritual idiot, which is exactly what Christians do. As soon as they start griping and complaining, all their blessings stop. So then the devil goes, well, my gosh, the Lord's not blessing you anymore. <laughs> Why don't you just stop serving and sit down there and just wait. Stop it. Mm. You did that when you were four. Listen, bad things happen for good reason. The Holy Ghost had that whole thing in his hand from pillar to post. The devil didn't even know it. He still doesn't know it. You know why? Nobody's ever seen the Holy Ghost. He's never been seen, as far as we know. That's a great asset to have because the devil never sees him coming He's always caught off guard He always get hit from blindside boom That's why it says if you resist the devil he'll flee from you Fugo in Greek means run why because he knows the Holy Ghost is around he can't see him You'd run too if you had to face somebody you couldn't see him. Yeah, when I was a kid I got scared to death Uh huh yeah, I was in grade school. I watched this movie called The Invisible Man. <laughs> yeah, came out in the 50s. It's been remade two or three times, but the one in the 50s was really scary. Because I started to wonder if invisible men were real. <laughs> started to develop an invisible man complex. I had a lot of emotional problems as a kid. It's sad. I never knew where the guy was. <laughs> that bothers you. Okay? You maintain your faith. The devil don't know where he is either. Right. He's Come set on. up for a butt kicking. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. Because all of a sudden, the Bible always uses suddenly when the Holy Ghost shows up. It's always sudden. Why? Because nobody sees him coming. Including the Christians. You got all your miracles sitting right there, but you can't see it. Nobody's ever seen it. But he's real. He'll show up here tonight. No one will see him tonight. They'll feel him. Though. Shouldn't we receive good at the hands of God? And there's poor Job. He doesn't know what's going on. And God used this incredible book and this story to save our lives. He was giving us a peek into the other side. And he was showing us what really goes on. Bad things that come to you do not come from God. You're either doing it or a spirit's doing it. But the Holy Ghost saw it coming and he's already got your escape all set up. You can't lose. You can't lose. Yeah, I know. It feels like you're losing sometimes. Yep. Sure it does. We walk by faith, not by sight. We walk by faith, not by feeling. If you walk by feelings, you'll never get delivered from demons, and you'll never get healed. That's how it works. Job was wrong. Great men and women of God can be wrong. No one's perfect. Not even this great man of God. What happened next? Oops. 
Okay. <laughs> well, that ended that Bible study. <clears throat> <laughs> What's God trying to tell you tonight? See, as soon as I said you'll never see the Holy Ghost, he shuts the tape down. Notice that? Brilliant. What's God trying to tell you? If you've had a persistent problem over the years that you can't get rid of, it's related to your soul. Something is amiss in there. There's a little stain in there of negativity, of offense, of self-hatred, of depression, of shame, of guilt. Something's in there that's blocking your miracle from God. Most of the time, you can tell what it is. You can track it down. Your emotions are the thermometer of the soul. If you trail that emotion to its root, you can catch it. God allows bad things to happen to Christians. You know why? Because he wants the emotions in your soul to manifest. You know why? He wants you to know they're there, and there's a root to them. That's why he didn't shield you like Job from the idiot at work. Uh -huh. You met one of those guys? Oh, they're beauties. They know everything before they even have any facts to base it on. They just know everything. And they're happy to tell you that by the hour, wasting your half your day. Blah, 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 blah. You've prayed and asked God to have a car run over that guy. <laughs> and the Lord said, I'm not going to run over that guy. I'm using him to get that emotion to manifest out of your soul so you can go to the root of it why you're taking offense at blabby people. Mike, you're not going to believe this. Every time I go to the mall, there's some gal there with a low cut outfit and 40 Ds. <laughs> I don't want it. I don't like it. I told God. No, God's telling you. The devil's going to continue to send you 40 Ds until you go to the root of that lust and get that out of your soul. I don't know why my psychotic husband acts and talks the way he does. They don't believe it. I've been fasting for him. Well, that's good. Fasting and praying for your husband is a good idea. But he's not going to change until you trail that emotion of hurt, negativity, anger, bitterness, frustration, whatever it is, and trail it down to that little root in the soul. You know why? Father loves you. He wants that out of there so he can heal you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If you live out of your emotions, like Lot's family, Moses' family, you're going to live a terrible spiritual life. You're going to be so sorry because you're going to be old so fast. You can't believe how fast you age when you get in your 30s. It's unbelievable. I mean, the years go. They start clicking. And then when you get in your 40s, it seems to speed up. It's the weirdest thing. When you get in your 50s, you're going, oh, my God. When you're in your 60s, you're going, oh, sh you're kidding. <laughs> it's insane. The older you, all of a sudden, you're old. Listen, you only got one life. You only got one life, honey, and you're losing yours. It's seeping away from you. You turn around, you can't believe it. Your kids are suddenly that high. It's unreal. All of a sudden, they're leaving. My God. They're getting married. And they're married to a loser like you did. <laughs> oh, now terror comes over you. My God, they're making the same mistake. It's the same demons. 
you don't get it do you? It's the same spirits coming down the yeah. Yeah. Your kids are gonna marry a total loser like you did You don't get it do you? It's all based on the souls of humans the emotions They didn't trail back to the root and get rid of it. There's always a root to negative emotions There's a root to it When you were an infant and fell out of the womb like Job stark naked You didn't have a bunch of offense wounds in there You didn't hate people You didn't hate other kids No, you got to absorb that pain you got to absorb that frustration you got to absorb shame Somebody's got to beat it into you. Who does that? Verbally abusive, controlling people. Your mother. Rat, 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 rat. Your dad. I told you to do it. Boom. What'd you do? You dropped a feather. It just should have been something that should never been blown out of proportion. What's the devil using your dad for? Beating it to drive that wound into your soul. There it goes. Now he's got a hook again. My husband won't stop cheating on me. <laughs> you married him. <laughs> Did you investigate the granddad? Was he a hound? Did you investigate his dad or, or him or anything? Was there were there lust demons in the family were other were there other adulterers in the family? Did you did you look at it? No, we were in love oh. Love <laughs> The kids just simply act like the parents it's the same spirits The only people that avoid those are people who don't have any children Well, I don't feel anything Let me give you a little secret some people that are very intelligent or have strong minds or strong wills They're strong people They will bury wounds in their soul and bury emotions They'll bury them and they don't feel them and the demons tell them there's nothing wrong with you. You're you're good. You're you're great. You're fine. Well, God in his mercy, if somebody starts praying for that person, God in his mercy has got to bring that out of there. He has to bring it up. Okay? Well, normal activity or temptation from Satan doesn't work on these people. They have to be broken. They have to be broken. If you're a strong person and you've been screwing up for years and you just bury it, you bag it, you got the Bill Clinton syndrome, you just compartmentalize it, click, clack, it's gone. Click, gone. The only way to get into that little cabinet in the soul that you store stuff that you don't hear anymore You got to be broken You can avoid that You can avoid it if you repent of it you acknowledge it You don't and not everybody doesn't have to be broken But if you're not going to repent a crack is coming a mercy crack He'll let the devil take it another step a job step Boom somebody dies Foreclosure bankruptcy a bang boom 
It's an act of love trying to get That thing out of the soul that you buried and never wanted to face You can't get healed from something you won't face And if you're an intelligent person with a strong will you can bury those things and never face them Let's pray Lord you stop my video And that's a sign that you want to help some people I know that love Covers a multitude of sins Lord there's some Christians here tonight that have soul issues and These soul issues these emotions are not under their control and they're damaging them spiritually They have low self-esteem issues And they don't want to face it They've got negative feelings about their parents About their spouse about their kids And they don't want to face it But tonight Lord, I'm asking you to give them a courage anointing Yes, a courage and anointing to face that negative emotion in their soul. I'm asking the Lord for every Christian here tonight who is living a carnal Christian life. I know they're doing it because of emotions, negative emotions, emotions that are out of control, emotions that are not from you. There are emotions that are being triggered by the devil. He sends people to trigger them. He sends misfortune. He spent. He sends sickness. He sends these things in, and you're allowing it to happen because these emotions of frustration and anger toward you, bitterness, disgust, grief, shame, exhaustion, come out, devil. It all starts Come on out. It all starts To block their blessings and block their healing and block their destiny and block their call I know each person here tonight has some kind of call on their life Every one of them. I know that's true. I Know that's true And I'm asking you to give them a courage knowing you tonight to face those negative emotions, those deep seated stains of anger, lust, and bitterness, and frustration, and criticism of others. I'm asking you right now to bless them tonight so they can be free. Because I believe almost everyone in this room truly wants to be free. And I believe most people in this room are willing to repent and face it tonight. And I know if they will face it, then you will heal them. And we can get these wounds out of their soul. We can get these spirits out of their bodies that are using these wounds against them. And Satan, in the name of Jesus, the Son of God, you are rebuked tonight. We stand in agreement against you where two or three are gathered together in the name of the Lord. There the Holy Ghost is in the midst. If we ask anything according to his will, we know that he hears us. And whatever things we desire, when we pray and believe that we receive them, we will have them. And I believe it tonight, Lord. I do. I know there are many more. That you're going to heal these horrible wounds in the soul. The fences, the self-hatred, the self-disgust. The self-pity, those are the cancers of Christians. And tonight, you're going to heal. You're going to deliver them. And I thank you for it, Lord. I thank you in Jesus' holy name. Now, if I was praying about you, if you got some carnal, emotional things in your soul that are blocking you spiritually, I want you to just stand up real quickly while you're there. We're going to pray for you. Just stand right up. you got 
carnal soulish problems in your soul and you're willing to repent of them. if you're not willing to repent and sit back down sit back down don't come up here thank you Jesus thank you Lord thank you Jesus and close your eyes if you would let's pray together father God dear Jesus dear Jesus these negative emotions in my soul they got away from me they got away from me they started out small and now they're big they got away from me and I'm sorry for that I'm sorry for that Lord and I'm asking you right now I'm asking you in the name of Jesus please forgive me for that please forgive me my ex-husband my ex-wife my ex fiance my my parents my whoever it was they all hurt me they hurt me bad and they didn't care they just hurt me and went on they didn't care they didn't care every ugly boyfriend every ugly spouse every ugly ex deliberately hurt me deliberately hurt me deliberately deliberately hurt me now I'm sorry about that Lord I'm so sorry <laughs> thank you Jesus please forgive me Lord please have mercy on my soul I'm so sorry I'm so sorry Lord come on up here sweetheart come on up here come up here thank you Jesus God forgive me come on keep praying with me God forgive me forgive me dear Lord I'm so sorry oh God these negative emotions Lord they got away from me they got away from me they got away from me and I'm asking you right now Lord forgive me forgive me dear Lord Forgive me, God. I am so sorry, Lord Jesus. What's wrong with your foot? I'm sorry, I didn't get on my back. Oh, you're back. Okay, stay right back. here. We're going to pray for you. Thank you, Jesus. Forgive me, Lord. Come on, pray harder. Pray harder. Pray harder. Dear Lord, I'm so sorry. I got negative feelings about and the devil's using my soul against me. He's beating on me. He's whipping me. He's beating on me. He's using me. He's using it against me. He wants to hurt me. He knows I have a future. He knows I have a calling on my life. He's trying to stop me. He's trying to stop me. Sweet Jesus, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Whoever hurt me, whatever that person's name is, speak it out right now. Speak the name out. Just the first name. Not the full name. The first name. Just speak that name out. Lift that person up to the Lord. We're going to pray for that person. Father, in Jesus' name, I'm lifting that person up. They stabbed me right square in the back. I mean right in the middle of the back. They lied to me. Right to my face. They stabbed me right in the middle of the back. And I'm so incredibly sorry. I'm releasing that person from my soul right this second. I'm releasing. Come on now. That insane wife you were married to. That crazy husband. Yes, you're going to release and forgive that person right this second. You're going to release that stain off your soul. Come on, self-pity, self-hatred. Let's do it right now. Come on, we'll do it together. Father God, the devil taught me to hate myself. I'm so sorry. Father God, I'm so incredibly sorry. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I hurt numerous people in my life. I've had multiple relationships and multiple marriages and I I was hurt by them and I stabbed them in the back I hurt them almost as much as they hurt me because I was hurt and I wanted revenge I wanted to pay them back and that was a sin vengeance is mine says the Lord I will recompense I sinned when I wanted vengeance. I sinned in your eyes. I made them pay for treating me like garbage. 
They treat me like garbage. Treat me like garbage. I am so sorry. God have mercy on me. These rotten people, the devil sent me. Ugly people to hurt me. Satan sent them to me. Satan sent me. Adultery and lust and pornography. He sent me playboys when I was a kid. And lust demons entered my body. I became a serial adulterer. Satan in the name of Jesus. Serial adultery. I bind your power. Come out of me right now. You serial adulterer. I bind your power. You lust demon. Come out of me right now. Get out of my body. Come out in the mighty name of Jesus. Come out in Jesus' money. Get out of that body. Now. Come out quicker. Come out. Come out. God forgive me. Jesus have mercy on me. Come on. Jesus forgive me. Lord forgive me. Lord forgive me. Have mercy on me, Lord. Hold that. Have mercy on me, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Come on, ladies. Every ugly man. Every ugly man that ever touched my body. Every ugly man that ever touched me. Come on. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Satan, I command you. Let this wound go. I want this wound out of my soul right now. You rotten spirit of infirmity, get out of my back right now. Come out of my back right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out of that body right now. Hurry up. I forgive him. I forgive him. I forgive him. Come on, ladies. You want to be healed? You want your body healed? You release that wound right now. Come on, you repent of that sin right this second. You want to get healed? You want your body healed? Come on, do it. Repent of it. Just repent of it. Satan, I command you. I command you. Witchcraft spirits from my mother and dad, from my grandparents. Witchcraft. Sorcery. Masonry. I curse you. Come out. Come out. All these men gotta go all these bad men. Come on out. Every one of you. Come out of me. Users, liars, go. Come out. Come on out. Come out. Get out of that body right now. Come out of there right now. Murder and hate. Take your breath and blow. Murder and hate. Come out right now. Come on out of that throat. Come out. Come out, you. Come out, you murderer. Cursing and swearing. Come out. Attacking people. Come out. Hating people. Come out. Come on out of there. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out. The spirit that's dragging my soul to hell. Come out of me. Come out. The demons from hell. Come out of me. Come out in Jesus' name. Keep coughing. Come out. Come out of there, I said. Hatred. Anger. Violence. Come out. Get out, I said. Get out, I said. Come out of there. Go in Jesus' mighty name. Get out. Come out. Come out of there. Evil. Come out of me. Evil. Evil. Come out. Evil. Hating people. Hating myself. Cursing and swearing. Go. Right now. Go. Right now. Come on out. 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 Come out. Get out of there. Go. I hate you. Come out of my body. I said I hate you. Come out. All these bad men. Come out of there. Fear. Fear and anxiety. Come out. Every transfer spirit of fear from an ugly man. Come out of my head. Come out right now. There he is. Come out of me. That's him right there. Get out of there. Low self-esteem. Guilt. Taking the blame. Taking the blame all the time. Come on out. 
Come on out right now. What's wrong with you? Uh, what's going on? I have been a neurological issue. What is it? A very important Excuse me, coordination box. When did it start? I did it 50 fast. You did a what? I did a long term fast. What were you fasting for? Um, deliverance and transformation. So, oh, now, when you was a kid, did somebody abuse you or hurt you bad? Um, not physically, but just emotionally or verbally? Emotionally. Who did it? Uh, parents. Just Which parent? Of love. Which parent? Uh, dad. Dad, what's his name? Greg. What? Greg. Greg? Yeah. Okay, close your eyes. Okay, breathe out of your mouth. There it is. Greg, and you come out of that body right now. You hurt your son. He needed your love when he was young, and you never gave it to him. Because the demons in Greg wouldn't let him do it. It never was Greg. Spirit, I command you. Spirits from Greg, come out of that body right now. Come on out. Greg, come out of there. Come out. I let my dad go. I released my dad from my soul. Come out right now. Come out. Greg, mother, mother, I love you, but I have to let you go now. Tonight's the night. Go now. Come on out of there. Come out. Come out right now. Come out right now. Dad. I don't need a mother and dad anymore. I have a heavenly father who would never hurt me in a million years and never withhold his love from me. Thank you, Jesus. Come out, both my parents, out tonight. Come out of there. I'm letting them go. I'm releasing them. I'm letting them go and I'm releasing them. Witchcraft of ataxia. I bind your power. Witchcraft. Come out right now in Jesus' mighty name. Sins of lust in my youth. I bind your power. Come out of me right now. Sins of hatred from my youth. Come out. Come out of me right now. Every transfer spirit from adultery. Come out. Come out of my body right now. Every spirit from my parents, go in Jesus' name. Say that. I bind these spirits and I command you to come out right now. Come on out. Say it. Come out of there. Every demon of infirmity, get out of my body right now. Come out. Come on out. Come out. Spirit, come out, I said. Come out of me. Come out. Sorcery and witchcraft. Come out of me. Right now. Come on out. Get out of my body. Get out of my body. Come out now. Come on out. I hate you. Come out. I hate you. Come out of there. Get out of my body. Quicker. Come out quicker. Come out faster. Every spirit from my husband. Come out of me. Get out of my body, I said. Come out now. If you can fast for a long time, you can fight. Anybody you can fast as long as you did can fight. Right? Now these demons in your body are going to kill you. You're going to die. We got to get them out of there. It's not rocket science. You got two choices. Get them out of there, or you're going to die. In bed. A lot lighter than that. You'll be down to nothing. When you die. I say we get them out. Now, how they get in there? How the demons get in there? Uh, generational stuff. What? What? Um, I, I don't know. You don't know. What were your parents into? 
Is anybody in witchcraft or masonry in your family tree? Um, I'm coming out of major generation bondage. What, what kind? What is it? Um, I mean, what bondage? A lot of uh, uh, antichrist, religious stuff. What religion? Um, what religion? Um, just, you know, religion devoid of the Holy Spirit. Moving you know the name about, of it? No. Okay. I mean, they would all associate with Christianity, Catholicism. Oh, Catholics? But, but my, my mom was the first believer. But your mom was Catholic? Uh, yeah. Come out. Come on out. Come out. Come out of there right now, quickly. You live around here? Yeah. Hey, will you do me a favor? Will you leave? go grab my card and call me tonight? I'm going to have you come in for a private appointment, okay? There's a lot more of this than we think. Hey, call me tonight. Come out right now, I said. Get out of my body. Say it. Get out of my body. Right now, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Get out of my body. What's your name? Derek. Derek? Yeah. All right, Lord, I want you to give Derek the gift of hate. I want you to give him hate for what the devil's done to his body and hate for these demons. I received the gift of hate. Jesus said, You cannot serve two masters, you must hate one of them. And now, Lord, I ask you to give him hate. Hate for what they've done to him. Satan, I hate you. You rotten devils, I said, I hate you. I hate you. Demon of lust, come out of my body right now. A lifetime of adultery, come out! Come out of my body right now! Get out of my body right now! Tell him to go. Tell him to go. Self pity, come out of me. Self pity, come out. Grief and sorrow, come out out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Get out. Satan, I hate you. You get out of my body. Come out of there right now. Come out right now, quickly. Come out. Every ugly man that touched my body, every transfer spirit comes out tonight. Come out of there right now. Low self esteem, rejection, abandonment. Come out right now. Go. Rejection, abandonment. Go. Come on, just repent of it. Just repent of it. Hurry. Hurry. If you repent of it fast, you get healed fast. Come on. Come on. Right now, go, devil. All these bad men. Witchcraft from my grandparents. Get out of there. Come out quickly. There it is. Witchcraft. What's going on? By who? By who? You related to that person? She's your friend? Okay. Who, who rejected you as a little kid? My parents. Mother mostly. Was she also critical? Negative? Was she nitpicker of you? Did she prefer other kids over you? She did? What's her name? Yandiga. Yandiga? Yadriga. Yadriga? Yeah. Ready? Father God, you see this beautiful woman standing here? Her mother, Yandriga, drove a spirit of rejection into her soul when she was a child. And he's still here. He has ruined all of her relationships. Every man, this rejection spirit brought her, hurt her, here in her heart. And this thing has to come out tonight. The mother has to come out. Mother has to come out. In the name of Jesus. 
Take a big breath. Low. Low. I release my mother from my soul. Come out. Keep blowing. Come on out. Mother, come out. Come out of me. Come out of my lungs. Come out of my stomach. Come out of my womb. Right now. Come out. Mother, I forgive you and I release you. Go. Come on out. Come out of there. Here she comes. She's coming up now. Here she is. Come out. Yandriga, come out right now. Come out of there. That's her. She drove fear spirits into my soul. Fear. Come out of me. Go. Come out. There he is. Come out right there. That's him. He's coming up right now. Come out of her. Every ugly man that ever touched my body comes out now. Come out of there. Come on out. Go. Go now. Go now. Come on out. Mother. Mother. <laughs> Come out. Every ugly man, go. All the bad men come out right now. All the fear. There it is. Go. Come on out. Go now. Come on. Go. Demon of fear. Come on out. Demon of fear. Go in Jesus' mighty name. All these bad, abusive, uncaring men. Go. Go in Jesus' name. Mother, go. I release you. I release my father. Abandonment. Lack of love. Rejection. Dad, I love you. But you must go tonight. You must go now. Come on, ladies. You have a heavenly father. You don't need a mom or a dad. Father loves you. Come out, Satan. Rejection. <laughs> Rejection. Go in Jesus' name. Come out, fear and terror. Fear and terror. Go. Go in Jesus' mighty name. Come on out. Come on, ladies. Ladies, come on. You committed adultery. You were an adulterer. You picked up. You picked up a spirit spouse when you committed adultery. You're an adulterer, an adulteress, and a spirit spouse entered your body. Satan, come out! Spirit spouse, come out of me! Spirit husband, go! Spirit husband, go! Come out! Spirit husband, come out! Come out right now! Come out. What's going on? I got uh, one here for my sister also. No, you. For me, I've got a spirit of a lot of things going on. About my childhood, rejection. My mother rejected me. What's her name? Come on. Come on. But it's more that, I mean, I've talked about that. I mean, she's wanted to be dead. She told me that I should have never lived. You got any bad emotions? Yes, I do. Over what? Over being, I know, being, being, being self-hated. Um, you self Arrogance. Right. You're arrogant and self-hating? Yes. That's a powerful demon. You're arrogant and you hate yourself. That's like a miracle. Yeah. 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 Maybe yeah. Brother I don't know what it is. I just need help. I have this barrier that I can't get back, can't pass. I want to be with Abba. I feel like I can't get can't connect it with Abba. I feel oh, like that's, this barrier. Now that's that's you believing lies again. Believing lies. Oh, they're all lies. He never left. He's been standing there the whole time. You left. I did. I left. Oh, you're gonna come home now. Do you speak in tongues? So you don't speak in tongues? No. Okay. So just pray after me. Gora baba. Gora baba. Tola sia. Tola sia. Vekoba. Vekoba. Tondarama. 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 Notice how easily you're repeating that. 
Slam dunk. You already have your gift of tongues. It's already in your spirit, man. You just haven't released it. You already had it this whole time. You were never away from God. You never left. It's all a trick. It's all a trick. You, your whole life's a delusion. It's all delusion. Yeah. Exactly. Thank you. It's all fraud. There's nothing wrong with you. Not your fault. It's No. What's wrong with you is here. Be gone. And then there's a demon, demon of hero then. Yeah, the problem is. Now, let's uh, give him a good beating now. Now, you repeat after me, and then you start adding syllables on your own. Any syllable. There's no wrong answer, so you can answer any syllable. Okay. Right? Okay. Good. 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 Good, perfect. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Lord, give her her prayer language right now. Give her her gift of tongues and crush this lying spirit in her head. Glory to God. Glory to God. Ah, you ready? Let's go. Speaking tongues. Good girl. Louder. 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 Add a girl. Louder. 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 Add a girl. Louder. Good. Louder. Good girl. Louder. Louder. Perfect. Beautiful. Keep going. Keep going, girls. Can you speak in tongues? Ah, go. Let's hear it. Shoot. Okay, stop. Okay, that's one problem when you fix the night. Your gift of tongues is blocked. Because I, with my condition, I have a speech issue. Yeah, I know. I know. Your gift of tongues is now blocked. Okay? So just repeat after me. Koya Vasha. Koya Vasha. Korashi. Korashi. Dekoma. See, it's not blocked. Did you notice that? Yeah. You were repeating after me? Yeah. But you were speaking in tongues going, shush, 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 shush. It's a trick. He lied to you. Okay, this time follow me and then add some syllables on your own. Ora mashanda. Belova. Bekova. Good. Keep going. Ora mashanda robosite. Good. Go. Louder, 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 speaking tongues louder. Good. There you go. Now I'm going to teach you uh, something on how to draw in the Holy Ghost anytime you want it. You ready? You just put a little hum to your tongue. It's like this. Now put a little hum to it and sing the Lord a love song. You ready? Ready? Alurare mo 
Good girl. Mura bare. Mura re mura musha sano. Good. Mura bare. Mura re re re. Were you doing it? Yeah. Yeah. Now I'm going to show you how you can draw in the Holy Ghost anytime you want it. You just put a little hum to it and sing him a love song like this. Honorable Lola Tori, Hola Murava, Ya Surave I was just telling him, thank you for healing you. Yeah. You're going to get healed. No, yeah. I was thanking him. Amen. Go ahead. Forever. Sing it out now, come on. You can draw in the Holy Ghost anytime you want him by singing him a love song. Sing it. Sing it out. Sing it out. Don't the Ramoshi louder. Hola Morero. Louder. On the Ramoshi. You seducing spirit, I curse you. Come out. Come out of my head right now. There he is. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Come out in the name of the Lord. Get out of her head. Some demon just flew out of that girl's head right there. He just flew out. Take command over the demons. Come on now. Take command. Take command. Satan. Take command. Take command now. Satan. I command these negative emotions and negative thoughts. So come out of me. Come out now. Take command. Take command. You can't handle the devil lightly. He's not going to handle you lightly. He'll he'll bash your face in if he gets a chance. Come on, fight back. Come out in Jesus' name. I command you, Satan. I command you. Take command. Behold, I give you power to tread on scorpions and serpents and over all. Keep yawning. Keep yawning. And over all the power of the enemy. Nothing will hurt you. Whatever you bind on this earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on this earth is loose in heaven. Come on. Loose your body from those negative emotions and those soul wounds. I command those wounds to come on me. Come on now. What? This is my wife's friend, sweetie. Hi. Kyle has attacked her horrendously, killed her children, gave oh. her cancer, and she needs to talk to you. Oh, okay. Hey, uh, when you was a little kid, somebody hurt you? Yes. Who? Man. What was his name? I can't remember. Was it a neighbor or something? It was my mom's friend's friend. Friend of your mom? Yeah, it was an old man. You know, what did he do to you? He put his penis not in me, but on. Rob in you? Yeah. Down here? Mm -hmm. And how many times that happened? One time, but he touched me with hands like twice. Three times. Okay, and then how old were you? I'm 39. No, at the time. At that time, I was eight years old. Eight. Hey, okay. Now, just close your eyes for a second. Now we're going to go back there, right this second. And in uh, Matthew chapter five, the Bible says, "Love your enemies, bless those who curse you, and pray for those who despitefully use you." Do you remember that verse? Yes. Okay. The Lord, that old man, was he an old man or a young man? Old man. That old man uh, had lust demons that fondled her when she was young. And the demons told him to do it. It wasn't the old man that did it, it was, that, it was them. Because they wanted to hurt her. And today we ask you 
if he was standing right here right now we would forgive him and we would bless him he's probably dead now it's too late for him but if he were here she would forgive she would forgive him and when he fondled her that day a spirit entered her body and that spirit of lust brought her other bad men when she got older and that spirit let in other spirits spirits of murder and death spirits of rejection and broken relationships and these demons have tortured this beautiful woman for years and tonight all of them people are going to be forgiven every one of them I'm going to forgive every one of them right now just name all their names all the bad men just name their name forgive them go ahead I forgive them and I release them from my soul I release them and I forgive them say it say their name Say their name. Say their name. Satan, I command you to let my friend go. Right now. I command you to let her go. The spirit of death. Come out. There he is. Come on out of there. That's him right there. Come out right now. Here he comes. Here he comes. Take a breath of love. There he is right there. Come out. Spirit of fear. Go. Come on out. Spirit of perversion. Come out. Come out of her womb. Come out of her vagina. Right now. Go. Come out of there. Come out, Satan. Get out of that body right now. Every ugly man the devil sent you comes out tonight. All of them. Come on out. Satan, leave her. Satan, leave her right now. Every one of them. There he is. Fear of fear. Fear of dying. Fear of the future. Fear of losing more. Come out. There it is. Let your tears go. That's the Holy Ghost touching you. Come on, honey. The Spirit of God's coming in. There he is. He's touching you right now, sweetheart. You're a very loved person. I receive it. Come on, honey. We break this curse of death off of her now. Break. Murder and death. Come out. Come out of her. Come out of there, you pervert. That pervert, that old man. Come out right now. Come out. Of her. Come out, you pervert. Come out. Come on, honey. Let your tears go. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out. There it is. Release. There it is. Release. Come out of her stomach. Come up out of her stomach. Quickly. There it is. Come out of her back. Come out of her back. He's back here. He's back here. Come out of there. He's right there. Come out. Get out of that body. There he is. Keep coughing. Come out right now. There he is. Come out now. Keep coughing. Come out right now in Jesus' hole. There he goes. Come out. He's coming out now. Satan, come out of her. Say it. Satan, come out of her. Satan, come out of her. Get out in Jesus' name. Keep coughing. Come out of that body. There they come. Come out right now. Go. Come out. They're coming out now. Sexual perversion. Come out. Sexual perversion. Come out. Murder. Go. Murder. There it goes. They're coming out now. Coming out now. What's going on with this girl? She's new here. Um, she's had curses at like failure after failure after failure all her life. Okay. She has insomnia. Hey, who put that curse on? I believe it was a neighbor who I discovered in recent years in prayer. It was a Haitian witch. Oh, what's her name? Uh, Miss Cornwell. Cornwell? All right. Close your eyes here. Repeat after me. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. If Miss Cornwell still alive, if Miss Cornwell is still alive, I pray you'll forgive her. I pray you'll forgive her. Come out of there. No, you keep coughing. Come out right now. Come out, devil. Come on, don't you stop. 
If she has, if she's still alive, I'm asking you to forgive her. And I forgive her. I'm praying you'll have mercy on her. I'll forgive her. And this ugly curse she put on my life. I want it broken up. Some old man uh, fondled her. Come out of there right now. I break this curse off in Jesus' name. Count of three. I ask you to forgive those witches and those warlocks and those curses. I bind their power because I forgive them. I command this thing to be broken. One, two, three. Break. Break off. Break. Oh. Break. There we go. Take a big breath and blow. Spirit, come out of her. Spirit, come out of there. Come on out. Come on out. You've been broken. Come out of her right now. Come out. Anger and hatred. Ugly men. Bad men. Fornication and adultery. Cursing and swearing. Come out. Right now. Come out of me. Come on out of me. Right now. Go. Get out of my body. Get out of my body right now, I said. Come on out now, I said. Say that. Come out of me. Come out. a girl. Get mad. Get mad. Spirit, I command you to come out of me. Come out. Come out quickly. Come out now. Hurry. Hurry. Come out now. Right now. What happened? He did a 40-day fast and caused neurological damage. Yeah, well, it's it's, it's something beyond. It's, okay. it, it, it's, it was his dad when he was young. And then he, there's a bunch of spirits in his family. He doesn't know what they are. And it's all in the family so, tree? Yeah, but he doesn't know what they are. And there's a bunch of generational curses. He doesn't know what they are. I already asked him. So he's going to come in for a counseling appointment. Okay. Satan, come out. There it is. YouTubers, hey. YouTubers, listen to me. This is a route tonight. This is a route. The devil's getting killed down here. Come on. It's a route. Reach out with your faith. Let your tears go. Come on. Let your tears go. If you don't have any godly sorrow, ask God to give it to you. Lord Jesus, give me godly sorrow for what I've done. Disobeying. A lifetime of adultery. Picking up spirits from women and men I slept with. God have mercy on me. God have mercy on me. God have mercy. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. God, forgive me. God, forgive me. Come on now. This thing is a route. A route. Come on, the Holy Ghost is here. Step out and get it. Reach out. Reach out quickly. Reach out quickly. Just repent of it. Just repent of it. Come on now. I repent for every generational curse, every witchcraft, every sorcery. I repent of all the sins of my ancestors and all my rotten sins. Oh my God. My rotten sins. YouTubers, generational curses are easy to break off when you repent of your sin first. You got to repent of your sin first. Come on. Just repent of it. Confess it. Say it. Jesus, help me. I sinned. This is what I did. Help me. I took an offense. I criticized people. I got mad at people. God have mercy on me. I was wrong. Come on, you gotta be like Aaron. 
Be like Aaron, the high priest. He said, forgive us for this foolishness. We have sinned. Forgive me of this foolishness. I have sinned. Be like Aaron. Pray that prayer. Quickly. Pray it quickly. I command this legion to come out of me right now in the name of Jesus. A legion of demons. I want you out. Start coming out now. One after the other. Out. Get out of it. Where'd that girl go? Where'd that girl? Come out. Hey, what happened there? Hey. What happened? What? I felt really light. I felt light? Okay, that's a good good sign. The spirits are good. Now, is there any bad men in your background you haven't forgiven? No. Any of them? I'll, I'll forgive them all. Now, do you have any bad emotions about anything? Negative emotions. Um, I, I can't take certain people's. What issues. kind of people? Uh, my friends' issues, I can take them personal. You take things personally? I can take my friends' issues personal. To oh, okay. Really now, me. just go ahead and close your eyes and go ahead and repent of it. Just repent of that. Just repent of it. No, the Lord Jesus takes those things personal. You don't, right? Correct. Yeah, you don't take on burdens. He takes them on. Okay. In First Peter chapter five, the Bible says, "Casting all our care upon Him, for He cares for you." You are to cast it on Him, not on yourself. Go ahead and repent of it. Come on now. Do you speak in tongues? No. Just repeat after me, okay? Lula Shanda. Lula Shanda. Alo Masha. Alo Masha. Bero Masia. Bero Masia. Ekuraba. Ekuraba. Bato Sete. Bato Sete. See how easy you're repeating that? No. Slam dunk. <laughs> I was speaking in tongues there and I was using different syllables. You happen to notice that? Yes. I was clicking different syllables like I am right now in English. I'm using different syllables. This time, let's do it again. Only you repeat after me and then add some syllables on your own. Okay? Kola Shata. Kola Vese. Hello. Fonda Vasha. Fonda Vasha Dadavi. Toda Ravashanda. Good, right there. Kora Mashanda Ravada Vashanda Dadavi. Keep going. Kelo Shata. Any syllable. Kola Mashanda Ravashanda. Good. Kelo Mashanda Ravuridi. Pero Baba. Don't think, just release it. Just think about it. Go, release. Alusha lava. Vendora mashive. Koya mashandara bashata. Ola mashada. Hey, you speak in tongues? Can I? You speak in tongues? Can you speak in tongues? I don't know. No. You don't know? Okay. Close your eyes. You, are you friends with her? Yes. Huh? You just friends? Yes. Okay. Do you speak in tongues? Yes. I okay. Do. Now close your eyes there. She just started speaking in tongues, but she needs to get it rolling. Go ahead. Kola Shandaraba. Araba Shandaraba Shite. Yandaraba. Any syllable. There's no wrong answer. Korama Shandaraba. Elola Mashandaraba Shite. Good. Good. Okay. Now just repeat after me, okay? Kola Shita. Kola Shita. Vero Basi. Vero Basi. Akuba. Akuba. Pandoria. Notice how easy you were repeating that? Okay, now you already have your gift of tongues. It's already in there. You just haven't released it. It's in your spirit, man. <laughs> So you want me to start? Huh? Yeah, yeah you'll start. You just follow me and then you add a few syllables on your own. Kora Shive. Kora Shive. Shando. Alo Bashandaraba. Kando Sivila. Any syllable. Kora Bashiti. Kora Basha. Good, like that. Perfect. Kora Meshive. Kora Boraba. Shandarabasi. Good, right there. Say that. Keep going. 
perfect. Any syllable, let it go. Any syllable, let it go. Come over here. She's going to speak in tongues and follow her. Ready? Good. Just release it by faith. You just release your gift of tongue by faith. Just let it go. Like that. You just kind of release it. Good. Keep yawning. There they come. Keep yawning. Come on. Keep going. YouTubers, listen to me. I want you to go to the website, hardcorechristianity.com. Go to the teaching button there and download the teaching on Satan's counterattack. You will be attacked within 48 hours of this service. Okay? Go to the teaching Satan's counterattack. Then read the other one How Satan Controls the Mind. How Satan controls the mind. Okay, you will be attacked within 48 hours of this service. The devil does not like people coming to the deliverance center. It hacks him off. He's going to make a move, and you got to be ready for it. I'll be ready next Friday. The seminar on familiar spirits, Satan's superstars, the insight on the familiar spirits that take over the planet when the Antichrist arrives. See you next time.